Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a survival list video today. My 10 favorite games I'm hoping to play in 2022. These are the games that I've been hyped for for other years or maybe only recently months. Some of these games have only just been announced and I'm really excited about playing them. I've been covering survival for six years nearly now. I've played every survival game under the sun, every early access title. So I'm really looking for stuff that's a bit different, a bit unique. There's a whole another list coming of indie little games that I'm really excited for. But these ones are a little bit bigger and I feel like these will probably be the most popular as well or some of them at least anyway so do leave a like make sure to subscribe to go and check out the rest of my survival content and let's go with my 10 favorite survival games i'm hoping to play in 2022 Kicking off with Dead Matter, this game seems to have been around for years and that's because it kind of has or was teased many years ago. It ran into some problems when it finally got its keys into the backers of its Kickstarter. Lots of them dissatisfied with what they saw, despite it being an alpha. And there have been problems behind the scenes with some game development going a little bit skew -if, with many members leaving and joining over the last two years. But it's still going ahead, they've still got progress reports, they're still updating the game and alpha backers I still believe can play it under embargo. So is 2022 the year we're finally going to see it? It's had a bunch of delays, a bunch of false release dates, hasn't even got a proper trailer as of yet, but Dead Matter feels like it's been in the survival fans mind for a long long time. So hopefully 2022 will be that year. Why am I excited about it? It still looks fantastic, even if it is a few years old now. The idea and premise of running around a Canadian wilderness fighting off Zeds as well as other players obviously does remind me a lot of games like DayZ. But Dead Matter talked a big game. They said they were going to be bigger and better than DayZ. They are going to have much more better fun mechanics in the game and it was all going to be much simpler but also much more enticing. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. Something that's not clunky like DayZ, something more modern that I can really get to grips with and let out a little bit of toxicity. But as we'll see, they've got competition on the horizon. If they don't get a move on and get this game into early access soon, it really is kind of killing the hype every single year that goes by with yet another full state or not another release. So while I'm looking forward to this one, I have put it at number 10 because of that reason, because of some of the issues it's had. And it is normal. This is pretty much normal game development, but unfortunately for them, they've had to do it in the public eye. Ark Survival Evolved was what pretty much made me a YouTuber, covering it first back in the day on Xbox and this was what really led me to start covering survival games as a genre. So I really probably should put Ark 2 a little bit higher, but I can't lie, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm uber duper excited for it. I am intrigued by the idea it's going back to a more primitive state and I like the idea of definitely a next gen version of the game. A positive thinker will say this is the game that Wildcard are meant to make. They've learned all their lessons, they've learned how to improve performance, especially on consoles in the future. They've learned how to communicate issues and make sure they don't muck up like they did with certain elements in the first game's run. But that is praying a lot. Despite being the most popular survival game since Minecraft, when you factor in all the console sales and the hype around it, Wildcard are one of the worst run companies going. They've done some atrocious things like release a paid DLC while in early access, cash grab the Nintendo Switch version of the game without updating it, and many more little asides that have really tarnished their reputation in my eyes. There's no doubt about it, Ark is a behemoth and it will be massive, just as big as Vin Diesel's head. So putting aside what I think about the management of wildcards, Ark absolutely is still a fantastic game in terms of taming creatures, riding big dinosaurs and crafting and building your own special bases. And that part of the game I'm really looking forward to, as I said, if it's definitely more focused on primitive style rather than technology, lasers and space whales. If it does come out in 2022, this will be one of the biggest survival games of the year, absolutely. Maybe I really should have called this the maybe they're coming out in 2022 video. Uh, State of Decay 3 is another one of the games. We have, haven't got an actual proper release date for it and I'm guessing it's probably going to be 23 or 24 before we actually see it. I've never been a huge uber fan of the previous games. I never really got into them. I was always too busy covering other stuff. But I always loved the idea of it. I remember being pretty upset that the first game didn't have big online multiplayer like DayZ, it only had like sort of co-op. And then the second came out and I was even more disappointed they hadn't managed to add it. But recent reports suggest that one of the founders that's left to make his own studio has said that the game hopefully will be 
fulfilling the promise that they once thought of, which was State of Decay as a fully online game. A game where you will run into other players, it will be a very similar story to maybe games like DayZ or Ark, where you can have maybe up to 60, 70 players. Now a lot of that is still hearsay at the moment, the trailer focuses on one person in the wilderness fighting against zombie creatures and looking forward to that. They definitely need to do something, they can't just repeat what number 2 was, as that was pretty much just repeated with bells and whistles what number 1 was. Yes, you want your sequels to remain the core mechanics, but it's still got to be a bit fresh, and number two just wasn't fresh enough. So let's hope number three really delivers something a bit new, a bit exciting, and proper multiplayer. Another game that got announced way back, way back when with a bunch of little trailers and then talk about this game being 80% actual proper gameplay. Many people cried it as fake and said no way. The little development team behind this had previously made I think Armored Core series or Mech Warriors or something like that and this was going to be their first attempt at making the game on their own fully. Well, it does look like Towers is back. They went through a big gap with no information like a year and a half in that time they found some actual publishers and they seem pretty decent they're one of the more not cash grabby publishers that i've seen so hopefully we're going to see some news about tales coming this year again another one that might end up being next year but i'm really looking forward to this kind of studio ghibli style pve online game the idea is that you're meant to build up your towers to get the win status now the devs have posted a few messages over discord stating that the game kind of premise has changed a little but it's still going to retain a lot of the core features that they first announced so it is going to be a pvp idea you will be fighting off against these scary creatures that will maybe periodically come and attack your towns or villages and you'll have to work with other players to fend them off while you gather, survive and maybe tame huge giant creatures. It's absolutely one of the most outlandish ones I've seen, there's no other game in this list that quite looks like this with the creatures, the style, the art and so that's why I'm really looking forward to it. Let's hope it actually delivers and it's not going to be just some janky unplayable mess. After the disappointment of Rust on console, where it's pretty much unplayable on older gen consoles and a real letdown in the way they were trying to grab money, I kind of said to myself I wasn't going to touch any more PvP survival games. The fan base can often be a little bit toxic and you've got to devote yourself fully to it. There are some exceptions. The day before I am getting caught up in all the hype, it does look like Division versus DayZ, and actually a good one at that. It does look great, I think the graphics look amazing, the environments look solid, and the idea of fighting off against zombies, being able to go back to a survival outpost, upgrade my gear, get new weapons, items, and then go back out looking for loot is something pretty special. The gunfighting looks okay, and the UI looks simple enough. It's not gonna be an overcomplicated mess like DayZ. The devs and the publisher have been a little bit off with some of their teases and reveals though, announcing stuff and then delaying it at the last second, but we have seen a bunch of gameplay now, an actual huge amount of gameplay considering, yet we won't know the real deal until June. That's when this is coming out supposedly, and this is one of the first games that actually got a proper release date, so we've got to give them some actual kudos for that. But yeah, I absolutely love the idea of running around a New York styled city, shooting other players, looting their bodies, and making our escape in 4x4 trucks and stuff like that. It sounds pretty cool, it looks pretty cool. Like I said, it's all very simplicity. I do think this will be one of the biggest releases this year if it does indeed deliver on what it's showing in these gameplay demos. We're into the top five now, and some of these could have changed places for sure. Ever since Small Lands first got announced about four years ago now, I was intrigued by the idea of being a little miniature creature surviving in a big human world. Of course, Grounded scratched that itch, but Small Land was first announced before Grounded, believe it or not. They've been taken over by a new development team over the last two years, and it seems like progress has been made a massive amount. They've slightly changed the art aesthetic of it and some of the premises, but generally, the core idea is there. You are a small little creature utilizing bugs, insects, and small creatures as your mounts as you go and gather resources, get into factions, and try and use some of the other creature factions to your benefit, unlocking brand new armors, and exploring a world without humans, seemingly. Originally meant to come out in early access in 2021, and hopefully gonna be having a demo, it of course was pushed back to 2022, but I'm hopeful this can deliver. It's still a really small team making this, so I mean, the expectations need to be tempered a little bit, but it's got all the core ingredients. Base building, taming, good foraging, a vibrant world. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Small Land will actually play like when I get my hands on it. Hopefully, maybe in the early part of this year. 
If you'd have told me that Bethesda would redeem themselves to me in 2020, I would have laughed my head off. But I really enjoyed getting back into Skyrim Anniversary Edition. And of course, Starfield is the game that we're talking about right now though. I know that Fallout 76 was a cluster truck. I have been one of its biggest critics and I won't play the game anymore until I see major changes made to it. But there is something about Starfield that I really like the look of. And it is meant to be a survival game by judging the leaks and stuff we've seen. And of course the trailer focusing on having an astronaut suit, you are going to need oxygen for lots of the gameplay by the looks of things. The devs have also said it's a more realistic take on the open world genre as well, so I imagine that we will indeed need to eat and drink, maybe a little bit lighter than some other survival games. Anywho, there's no doubt about it, I'm approaching this with trepidation. Is it going to be one of the best games that Bethesda have ever done in the kin of Elder Scrolls, in the kin of maybe Fallout 4? Or is it going to be just another bad showing like Fallout 76? We won't know until we get there. I'm intrigued by the different planets you can visit, a whole bunch of them apparently, a whole galaxy to explore, and the idea of having this ship as your main hub possibly, where you'll be upgrading and getting new things for it. Chuck in a mech robot companion and I'm totally down for giving this a shot. It may end up being awful, it might be the best thing Bethesda have ever done, but I definitely want to be at the forefront of it, giving you guys news about it. And yeah, I'm hopeful this one being something good. And of course, now we do actually have a release date, it will be coming on 11th for the 11th, 2022. So another one we can concretely hopefully say it will be out this year, unless there's any last minute delay. But apparently, as of recently, it has gone gold, the majority of the game is there, and now they're just quality fixing the game until it's released. I started my second channel, Jadecraft, last year because I want to showcase a little bit more on the indie side of games. Some games that are a bit more chill, they aren't the PvP, they aren't the big open world crafting games. Things like Little Devil Inside, which will be a survival game, but it looks like it's going to be more stages in terms of smaller environments to explore as you go over a fully fleshed overworld map. It's pretty much like a Japanese RPG game. So I'm looking forward to this because it does offer something different. It's like a Monster Hunter style survival game where you'd be going out trying to gather evidence by looks of things or investigate mysteriouses or disappearances or just unique sightings of creatures and trying to basically capture them, corner them and get the info you need before taking them back to your professor. Another game that's taken absolutely years to come out, originally scheduled for the Wii U back in the day, it is hopefully going to be arriving on PlayStation 4 and 5 at some point this year. And given they've been showing more gameplay demos off with the UI looking pretty sparse and nice, I'm hopeful again that this will be in the middle of the year rather towards the end. It's just got a cuteness or charm about it and that's why I probably will be covering most of this on the actual second channel rather than the main. But we'll see how it goes. I just like the idea of running around this world, fighting off against these weird creatures, taking them in hand and trying to find the best way to defeat them, a la the Witcher or as mentioned, Monster Hunter style. A full-blown proper survival game where you're going to need to eat and drink and get yourself prepared with NPC companions to come and help you along the way and various creatures that you'll need to get around the landscapes a little bit quicker. It's got an unusual mix here and that's why I put it up so high despite some of them other games being fantastic, I think this is going to be special for me. So that's one end of the scale. The next, of course, is games like Sons of the Forest, one of the most hyped hardcore survival games you guys are, I'm sure, are looking forward to. Of course, it's only going to be on PC by the looks of things, unless anything's changed, so we won't be seeing a console version of this until maybe next year or even the year after. But I'm very excited about Sons of the Forest, offering better gameplay than the original, giving even more things to craft, more items to play with, and absolutely more scares to be had. The Forest is one of the best survival games ever, period. Rated highly on Steam, absolutely loved on PlayStation, and sadly crying into your Xbox tears you never got a chance to play it. Will that change with the sequel? I'm really hoping so in the far future, but it does look great adding new abilities to dig up treasures as well as find secret little vaults and just more crafting options, more gunplay options and of course the weird NPC that you'll have by your side while you adventure. Virginia is the free-legged lady we've always wanted. She's going to be there helping you out defend and set up your bases from obviously the mutants. In terms of pure survival games, this is it. It doesn't really get much bigger then Sons of the Forest. It's going to be huge when it comes out on PC. Expect over 2 million copies sold within the first month. I guarantee this is going to be another massive one. 
I'm pretty amazed that something is actually taking the place of Sons of the Forest or Little Devil Inside as maybe number one and two. But of course, since I saw Nightingales, I've just been enraptured by the idea of having a fully blown new world, but actual proper survival game. A game that you'll be able to base build, a game you'll be able to go and take on these steampunk, oh no, not steampunk, lamp punk bad guys based on folklore from the 17th, 18th and 19th century, I'm totally down for this. It's gonna offer something special and I feel like it could be the surprise big hit of the year. Made by the same people that helped produce games like Mass Effect as well as Knights of the Old Republic, it really does look something special. If you could combine that base building with Horde style defense mode, and exploring different maps and biomes like it's promising using these gates or portals, I'm totally down for this one. Add to that giant bosses that may be like raid creatures we'll have to take down, camping spots and a good story where we've got to get back to Nightingale, the city where pretty much this all started from, then I am all over this one. Crafting and making your own weapons and improving stuff, getting armors and being able to play with others. Still not confirmed exactly how many, but it does look fantastic. The base building especially is what's drawing me to this. A proper PvE experience as well, not ruined by the toxicity of PvP. And yeah, I can't wait to try this one out. And so it has replaced all of them games that I mentioned, as I'm really hyped or really excited for and I think could do really big stuff. Like I said, a shout out to all the other little indie games that I'm fond of, like Planet Crafter, like Arid, like some of the others, like Wonderlust, that may be coming out next year. They'll all be showcased a lot more probably on my second channel, or the main, I don't know yet. I am venturing more and more into open world games. You're going to see Dying Light 2, that's not included because I don't feel like it's a full-blown survival game. I do feel like it is more of just an open world game, and others like Horizon Forbidden West. But I'll always be back for the survival big show, the games that matter, the games that you guys are most hyped for, and the games that I find the most interesting. Let me know your top three games and survival you're looking forward to in 2022 and I'll see you rat bags later.